Oh, never mind. It is there. My bad. And we're recording now. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Killian. Thank you, everyone. Hey, good morning. Happy Tuesday. So today we're talking about Justin Martyr and a couple other interesting things like, for example, the book of Tobit, which one wonders, do we ever read this in church? In fact, yes, it's happening right now. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Great. Okay, let's go. So today we also have with us the two Anthonys who are going to be doing the evangelization and communication work that we have in store for us. Yes. This is an idea that, as Sandy has noted, is in the decades in the making. However, we're actually doing it. So that's the difference <laughs> and kind of a big one. This is something that I'm very excited about, but that's also kind of like more the kind of the bigger picture of the things that we're doing. Here on coffee, though, we're going to keep doing coffee. So let's begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. On the night of Pentecost, after I had buried the dead, I, Tobit, went into my courtyard to sleep next to the courtyard wall. My face was uncovered because of the heat. I did not know there were birds perched on the wall above me till their warm droppings settled in my eyes, causing cataracts. I went to see some doctors for a cure, but the more they anointed my eyes with various salves, the worse the cataracts became until I could see no more. For four years, I was deprived of eyesight, and all my kinsmen were grieved at my condition. Ahikar, however, took care of me for two years until he left for Elimaeus. At that time, my wife Anna worked for hire at weaving cloth, the kind of work women do. When she sent back the goods to their owners, they would pay her. Late in winter, on the seventh day of distress, she finished the cloth and sent it back to the owners. They paid her the full salary and also gave her a young goat for the table. On entering my house, the goat began to bleat. I called to my wife and said, where did this goat come from? Perhaps it was stolen. Give it back to its owners. We have no right to eat stolen food. She said to me, it was given to me as a bonus over and above my wages. Yet I would not believe her and told her to give it back to the owners. I became very angry with her over this. So she retorted, where are your charitable deeds now? Where are your virtuous acts? See, your true character is finally showing itself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial, the heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. Blessed the heart the of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. Blessed, 
the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his command. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steadfast. He shall not fear till he looks down upon his foes. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus to ensnare him in his speech. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. You do not regard a person's status, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should we not pay? Knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, why are you testing me? Bring me a denarius to look at. They brought one to him, and he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They replied to him, Caesar's. So Jesus said to them, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. They were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate St. Justin the Martyr. Justin the Martyr is one of these very interesting saints who is a father of the church, but not a doctor of the church. At that point, and this is the middle of the, you know, the second century, there wasn't a lot of doctrine that had been established, especially in the like, what everything means sense. <clears throat> this is like that second, third generation of Christianity that was still very much finding itself. But from Justin, we have so many very interesting points. So there's a philosophical point, which is actually kind of a political point. Then there's also the interpretation of scripture. Both of these in Justin are a big deal. The first one, the philosophical point, is that, this is from the Stoic philosophies, that the wisdom that is out there, these are like traces of God. These are like seeds, little, little seeds spread throughout the world of the divine. And that in that, we then for have, you know, the logos, Christ, the word, also out there throughout the whole history of the world, becoming incarnate in little tiny ways, but ultimately and for real in Jesus Christ. And so in this way, that which is wisdom is always wisdom in Christ, regardless of where it comes from. So much so that like we have like um, hidden Christians before Christianity was a thing like Socrates, you know, which is, which is a very strange and wonderful idea. It also sounds a lot like relativism in, in the modern sense, but it's not because first of all, it's, it, it's, it's, it's Christ being incarnate in all these various different ways. What that is, however, is not relativism. It's a very strange kind of Christology, which uh, ultimately, like, this is a problem that has to be dealt with later on. No, the incarnation of Christ is a one and only thing. But the idea of the word, of wisdom, of this, which is, you know, divine, being incarnate, though, is obviously by analogy. One of the very great and important things about scriptural interpretation in Justin is what he had to say with regard to the various senses in which we can take scripture. So we can take scripture on a basic literal sense, but then by analogy, a whole bunch of other things. For example, 
a moral sense, what it has to say about us and the way we live our lives. And then after that, more than that, so the, the so-called anagogical sense, how does this actually lead us to God? So today we were reading from the book of Tobit that uh, Carol pointed out before we started coffee this morning, we, when do we read this? Well, it's in these kind of interesting weeks that happen to get chopped off either by the beginning of Lent or the end of Easter that are gonna be incomplete. And so unfortunately, both last week's readings in Sirach and also this week's readings in Tobit, kind of, we skip them a lot, but here we are finally. So let's talk about this for a second. What are the like eschatologically directed idea in, you know, ideas in this reading that we hear about poo in the eyes? This is one of the most bizarre, I, this is one of the most bizarre pictures in, in terms of the narrative in scripture and a wonderful reason why the literal interpretation here is not necessarily going to be a useful one. There are going to be a lot better things that we get out of this than merely focusing on don't, you know, take a nap underneath the birds. It's, it's kind of frustrating. It's, it's a frustratingly, you know, mundane kind of picture that how, how miserable instead what are we really talking about here blindness and then whenever blindness comes up we know that by analogy there's something in blindness this idea that is going to be important for us in a spiritual way and in fact we have the moral aspect of scripture being mentioned right away that don't be ungrateful this ingratitude that you old blind man are showing at this goat happening to be in your life suddenly is not characteristic of what you are trying to do so that we should also be grateful, especially in those moments when we don't feel like it, especially in those moments that we feel already annoyed or otherwise put out. Like for example, those moments when it feels like there are birds and a doo-doo on our heads, you know, especially those moments. Furthermore, there is, the, very clearly this other thing in here that I'm, I'm sure you you heard this I'm sure you saw it or the dig that especially in a modern understanding of scripture wants us to hear which is that the weaving of cloth is the work of women did you hear that <clears throat> of course right so once again <laughs> interpretation of scripture has to be done in not necessarily the literal sense this is not what it's saying. What that is, is a reference back to the wisdom literature that we would have been reading in these previous week and, you know, Eastern Pentecost and Lent before it and all the other things. Instead, um, like the subject of weaving, especially, it's, it's kind of like one of those ideas like blindness, where it means something a lot deeper than just the, you know, on the surface kind of meaning of what the word says. Weaving, and why it is appropriate, you know, quote unquote, for women has nothing to do with like servile labor or something that is, you know, for the weaker sex or something like, no, not at all. This isn't, it's not meant to be misogynistic back then and it's not meant to be misogynistic and certainly in the way we, would, we should read scripture now at no point. Rather, it's about the virtue of a good person. If we take the the, the feminine part about out of it for a second. It's actually a way in which wisdom, again, wisdom is expressed, that the kind of work of weaving is tedious, methodical, difficult. It is something that requires a great deal of time and attention. And so that's the kind of person who is being described. Now in the wisdom scripture, in the wisdom literature in scripture, uh, this is described as a wonderful kind of woman, but also in the same places where wisdom is described in a feminine fashion, because it takes attention and care and time and being meticulous. That's the point. So the interpretation of scripture is something which is pretty important and the literal sense is usually not necessarily where we want to begin and end. We have to begin there because there are words on the page, ultimately. There are words that we are receiving, even if in translation. But what do they mean? 
So thank you, St. Justin, for writing an apology to a guy named Trifo once upon a time. So Trifo was a Jew. He didn't like all this kind of talking about the Christ and all, all those things. There's a famous apology to Trifo. There's a more famous apology uh, that Justin writes about why Christianity uh, should be allowed in the Roman political, political world. That in fact, it's a very good thing and leads people to a better way of life and is the fulfillment of philosophy. All these philosophies that came before, they're really just kind of being really, really well done in Christianity. Of course, Justin also had his own philosophical school to teach exactly this in Rome. That's what he was doing. When he converted to Christianity, he made sure that everyone else would know about it because it was really great as a philosophy on how to live life. This is a little bit strange for us because when it comes to like saintliness, we don't think of Christianity as a philosophy to be lived, but rather, you know, a faith. This is our faith in Jesus Christ. This is, you know, the resurrection from the dead, things like that. But this is also one of these interesting things about St. Justin. He's saying, we call him kind of over the top on purpose, St. Justin the martyr, not St. Justin the teacher, not St. Justin the, you know, interpreter of scripture or something, but St. Justin the martyr. This is a good idea too. Christianity is a philosophy. Sure, it's a way to live. Fantastic. But his saintliness doesn't necessarily come from his doctrine, rather the integrity of his life. And this, of course, is always the message with martyrs. Anyway, I wanted to talk about that now and also a little something else, which is that this week we're getting ready to celebrate Corpus Christi. So this feast day, which is just all about the body and blood of Christ, this feast day, which is entirely just for praise of Christ in the Eucharist, is coming up. So there are three Thursday feasts that are kind of biggies. One of them is Holy Thursday. Then we have Ascension, which is something we usually don't do on Thursday, but rather on Sunday in this part of the world. And then Corpus Christi, which is exactly the same kind of thing. It's actually a Thursday thing because of Holy Thursday, but because it's easier to do, we do it on Sunday following generally. So regardless, Thursday, this Sunday, definitely this is the time of Corpus Christi all the time. This is the Corpus Christi week, certainly. And therefore, it, be, it behooves us to talk a little bit about the Blessed Sacrament and to prepare our minds for it. So today, I'm merely just going to say this. It's on the horizon. <laughs> I'm not going to give like the, the tool, the special kind of like, think about this and you'll have suddenly a more fruitful celebration of Corpus Christi. But rather, I just want to say that it's right there. It's coming up. And it's a wonderful feast day, so things to think about. As we always do, now let's bring our prayers together and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father's prayer intention for this month, for young people who are preparing for marriage with the support of a Christian community, may they grow in love with generosity, faithfulness, and patience. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, that the spiritual nourishment they give their children be received with thanksgiving and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, hungry, infirm, or oppressed, that any darkness in their life be cast out by the light of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that we continue to thrive and spread the good news to our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that God will look kindly on our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, for whom or what else shall we pray? Lisa asks that we please pray for Amy and her family, that the Lord guide them and keep them safe on their travels this week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Larry asks that we please pray for Suzanne's recovery. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Linda asks that we please pray for her mom for physical and emotional healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Sandy asks that we please pray in thanksgiving for the gift of talents bestowed upon the parish to further the good works and teaching of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Mercedes asks that we please pray for everyone to pray and receive God's wisdom that his will be done and not ours, bringing us all closer to our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the folly of the cross wondrously taught St. Justin the martyr the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, grant us through his intercession that having rejected deception and error, we may become steadfast in the faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Good times. Nice. All right, let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. So, hey, it's June. That means it's the month of the sacred heart. <clears throat> so in the coming days, the daily reflection is gonna start talking about sacred heart things after we finish up the sacrament uh, things that we're talking about right now. Some things to look forward to. All right, everyone have a beautiful day. We'll see you tomorrow. Good and happy times. All right, God bless you all. Bye. Thank you. Have a good God day, Father. You, Father. Thank you. Welcome guys. Thank you.